Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are on day 11. Day 11. Day 11. It's hard to believe that it's already September the 11th. So we are on day 11 of praying for marriages in the month of September. So thank you guys for joining us. I am Tamika Bell. This is Leah and Bell. And we are with Sound the Bells. And we are praying for marriages for the entire month of September. So, thank you for joining us this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Bishop. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, how are you this morning, Mr. Bell? I'm good. <laughs> a little hoarse. I don't have much of a voice this morning. Yes, yes. Mr. Bell um, had the ministry yesterday. And he's just a little bit, just a little bit tired this morning. So, um, we're going to pull him on through in the Holy Ghost. I'm tired from driving last night. Oh, he's so shady. <laughs> he's so shady. He did I not. Am. He did not have to drive. He did not have to drive. I didn't have to drive, but I did. He just chose to drive. I did pull my weight though. She did pull a little. She pulled some weight. <laughs> was he preaching like a wild man? Yes, yes. He was. <laughs> he was preaching like a wild man yesterday. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He jumped on top of the pews and jumped over people and flipped over flowers. Okay. A bishop. Maybe not. A bishop. Good. Yes. Good morning, Veronica. Good, Good morning, morning Leah. Veronica. Good morning, Good morning Jasmine. Jazz. Good morning, you guys. We're on day 11. Day 11. Day 11, praying for marriage. And for us, for those of us who are adults, you Good remember morning, what Tisha. happened, um, what, several years ago? Uh-huh. 9-11. Oh, today is 9-11. Okay, yeah, 9 -11. that's right. Today is 9-11. Today is 9-11. That's right. I remember 9-11. I was at home and I thought it was a commercial that played on every channel over and over. I couldn't believe what was happening. I was asleep. And then finally I got the... I just deal. thought they was playing. I thought my phone kept ringing. Someone kept calling me and telling me that we we at war. We under attack. And I was like, man, stop playing. I'm asleep. Because yeah. I, I was posting that class today and I had skip class. I was on my way to work. Yeah, I was on my way to work. Yeah. So it's 9-11. And uh, Irma is somewhere out uh, somewhere hitting, uh, coming up the coast of Florida right now. So we keep praying for those people as well. But we are on day 11, and I'm um, going to give him one second because he's trying to make sure he gets his other stuff on. We good to go? All right, day 11, praying for marriages. All right, so our topic this morning is naked and afraid. Uh, no, naked and unashamed. <laughs> I said naked and afraid. TV shows mixed up. Good morning, Lashay. One of my Lashay. favorite TV shows is Naked and, and, and uh, Afraid. And I just saw it. That's not what I mean. <laughs> but that's my favorite show. They're out in the wilderness. They're naked. And they're naked. They're just trying to. They're just trying to. I mean, sometimes you're up married and you're naked and afraid. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, who knows? <laughs> but it's Naked and Unashamed. Coming from the scripture, Genesis 2.24, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2.24. Genesis 2.24. Um, Good morning, Shanique. Good morning. Um, Genesis 224, 224 is for this, morning, uh, that's for this reason a man shall leave his mother father clear. That's not that one. 25. Um, the two shall become one. Call it for me, babe. It's six. I'm sorry, guys. He's going to pull it up for us. Somebody pull it up for go us. right here. I got it. I we got know it. it. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife, uh -huh. and they shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. One flesh. Verse 25. Uh -huh. And they were both naked. The man and his wife, and were uh, and were not ashamed. They were both naked, and they were both and not Genesis ashamed. Genesis two twenty four yes. and twenty five. All right, naked and not ashamed. One of the ways that we like morning, to mom. Morning, good morning, Janine. good morning. One of the ways that we like to to explain um, being naked and unashamed is allowing your spouse to talk to you. I mean, when your spouse tells you something, and um, taking it seriously, and not taking it back anywhere. It's really hard, especially for men. Now, women, you know, this is really hard for a man to tell a woman some things. There's some things that a husband is not going to say. He doesn't want to mm -hmm. say. And if he opens up and shares to you, if he opens up, if he if he really feels like he can trust you enough to be completely naked, mm -hmm. then that means that you have to hold that thing. You have to, you have to, we are, are, are incubators naturally. That's who we are. Our wounds are little mini incubators. And so um, our spirit is the same way. We are we are built to hold stuff. We are built to hold it until it's time to be released. We mm -hmm. are built to hold it, to pray pray over it, intercede over it. So if he tells us something, if he tells you something, and you know that that thing's like whoosh, it's for you to hold and not say not not 
like give up that's one way to give up but come here what, what do you have for that what's your favorite one for naked and um uh, and un, 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 i'm sorry naked and unashamed that 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 thing See, messed me up she's so worldly <laughs> I'm not worldly. I like survivor shows. <laughs> I was just picking. I like survivor shows. But um, one one way to look at the way the way you can really see naked naked. And share the video by the way if you haven't already. Go ahead and share mm -hmm. this video on your page. Um, naked and unashamed. Um, naked when when you're naked before someone, you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You allow them to see you in a yeah. vulnerable state. You allow them yeah. to see your your um. You don't, you don't get naked in front of anybody. Mm -mm. I mean, some people do. You know, you know, make, you know what I'm saying. You, but you don't get, <laughs> you don't get naked in front of anybody. Good morning, good seeing you yesterday. Um, uh, Titus. Titus, but you don't get naked in front of anyone. Yeah. You're naked when you when you're naked, you're really before someone. you who you want to be intimate with, who you are being vulnerable before. Uh, when you're naked, you're really exposing yourself. You're exposing your imperfections if you have mm -hmm. any. Mm -hmm. um, you're really putting yourself in a, a very vulnerable and intimate place. You don't get naked before anyone. Mm -hmm. So we talk about getting naked and unashamed. Taking that same concept in the natural with being emotionally naked before your spouse. Uh, being spiritually naked before your spouse. Uh, discussing the same things and sharing things with your spouse that will put you in a vulnerable state. Yeah. And that's why, like, um, like Tamika was saying, um, Ms. Bell would say, you want to really make your, create yourself, create a safe environment. Good morning. Good morning. Uh -huh. Create a safe environment where your husband or your wife can share with you and trust that what they're sharing with you is not going to go any farther. Uh -huh. um, when, you, when you're being naked um, emotionally, when you're being naked um, spiritually, when you're being naked Mentally, that means you're sharing intimate details of your life, or your, you may be sharing your insecurities, mm -hmm. sharing things that were, were your, your shortcomings, mm -hmm. um, sharing those things that are that are that will make you vulnerable publicly. Mm -hmm. But if you we go back to what we talked about, as far as your spouse being your friend, but when your spouse is your friend, you are able to share those things with your spouse mm -hmm. and trust that what you're saying to him or her is not going to go any further. And being able to share those things openly without a spirit of judgment, yeah. uh, without a spirit of, of feeling like it's, it's going to come back later in an argument. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing you, you cannot ever do. Mm -hmm. I don't care how angry you get at your spouse, how heated an argument get, you never want to bring up anything that they've shared to you in a vulnerable place that they share with you bring it back up in an argument mm -hmm. or throw it back in their face mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or, or say it publicly jokingly in front of a, a mix in front of mixed company that's right that's you right. don't want to do that because you may be joking but if it was something that, that would make them vulnerable something that was sensitive to them a sensitive subject sensitive matter mm -hmm. um good morning janice um you don't want to throw that back in their face because it will cause them to shut down yeah and you will lose your friend and a spouse and then they'll begin to share their secrets. They'll begin to get naked before somebody else. Yeah. And then they'll yeah. be emotional. And that opens up a whole new door. Mm -hmm. But you want to create a safe place where your spouse can come to you and talk to you about any and everything and trust that it's not going to go any further than, than your bedroom pillow. You know, right. pillow talk. Right. And one of the worst mm -hmm. wounds we do, we do healing and restoration and healing and deliverance and things like that. And one of the worst... One of the worst wounds is a self-inflicted wound. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that as a spouse, the two of you, good morning, Angela, the two of you are one. You are becoming one. You are one. And so when you say something or when you do something and that trust is broken, that leaves, that breaks down a barrier. Mm -hmm. That leaves, the, that leaves an open door. And so they're wounds. That's how some uh, wounds are. You have those spouses that joke, 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 joke a lot. And so, and when I say it, I, I'm a jokester. He knows that, but not in that sense. I mean, the, the type that take every little thing uh -huh. and turn it around. And every little thing is funny, and you feel like you can't become naked. I remember when, <coughs> excuse Bless me, everyone, it's morning time. I remember when we first were married, it was it was so um, uh, 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 to me, shocking for me. <coughs> excuse me. He came to me. And uh, we were having a, a tough spot. This was in the beginning. We we're trying to get to know each other. We are trying to get to, you know, we're trying to make this purple. We're, we're, we're molding this thing. We're trying to make purple. Mm -hmm. 
blah 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 so he comes and i can't remember what we were arguing about um but he came in thank you he came in a room and he just started talking and he said you know this is me and I just, I just want to be able to be open with you. I just want to be able to tell you everything. I just want us to be able to share every little thing. And what was going through his mind at the time, he would have to tell you. But he came in and he started taking off a layer of clothing. So as he, as he revealed one thing to me, he took off his shirt. As he revealed something else to me, he took off his t-shirt. And as he revealed something else, he took off his pants. So he began to reveal stuff and began to talk to me and began to give me uh, all of his inside information. I mean, I knew it anyway, but... <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. But he began to give me all of his inside information. And by the time he was finished, he was completely naked. Standing there in front of me, completely naked. Naked and unashamed. He said, this is me. This is me. This is who I am. Um, and it has to be accepted. Like, this, this is who I am. And you have to be able to be that vulnerable with your spouse. Mm hmm um, when you when you're like, like we say when you're naked in the natural in the natural sense you are really vulnerable you don't want your, yeah. your your business your Facebook pictures your Facebook posts to be all on Facebook because you standing in a room naked um, mm -hmm. I don't care how beautiful your body is you don't want it everywhere There's people everywhere seeing how naked you are yeah no matter how beautiful your body is it's just you, you, when you're naked is intimate moments yeah is is sensitive it makes you vulnerable yes. It opens your body up to be completely exposed. That's it. Uh, be completely exposed. Mm -hmm. And you want to be that same way with your spouse um, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. mentally, socially. Mm -hmm. You want to be completely exposed with no hidden secrets, um, right. no no skeletons in your closet. Um, skeletons have a way of fall, falling out sometimes mm. when the door gets cracked. Mm. No skeletons in the closet, um, no hidden agenda. Um, no hidden motives. That's right. You want to be right. able to be pure and uh, you know completely open with your spouse and That's getting right. get into a place where you, you can talk and discuss mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And that may start right. and, and and getting naked before your spouse, um, emotionally, mentally, depending on where you are in your marriage. If you've been hurt before, it can be challenging. It can be hard. So you may have to go back to that friend phase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be, and establish a friendship yeah. where you can earn each other's trust. You you oh, go, go. Oh, yeah. no. Well, and you, and like you were saying earlier, <clears throat> you you may be in a marriage where you, you you are joking a lot. You're joking a lot, and your spouse is always jo joking with you, or making comments in front of his company. Mm -hmm. If that's offensive to you, and they're saying too much, where well, it may be a completely joke to them because no one knows what he's saying, what she means, it could be completely, you know, just all in good fun to them, mm -hmm. but to you, it's a sensitive matter, and you and you say that. Express that. Don't continue to allow that to happen and you continue to shut down and not share because you don't want to be brought up again. Your spouse, if that's their nature, they, they may not understand the damage that they're doing by you know joking about something yeah. that is sensitive to you. Joking about something that, that's a matter of your heart. Mm -hmm. So express that to them. Um, go back to something you said. Uh, those skeletons in the closet. There's a there's a, a, a thing with the older say the older saints. And I um, mean, you guys, please excuse all of our whatever. <laughs> we just came from Mobile yesterday, and for some reason, the the something <coughs> atmosphere. I think it's the old trees in Mobile for me. But he ministered yesterday, so his voice is gone. But um, the the older, you know how you get your your wisdom from your your older your older saints. Praise God for them. And they'll tell you when you're young, ladies, ladies, always keep you a stash off to the side. That's your stash. He doesn't have to know about it, but you need to be able to get out if you can. That one. And then the other one is um, uh, some men are taught that there's not, and, and some of us women, your spouse doesn't need to know everything about you. They don't need to know everything. You know, if you get married, some stuff just needs to stay buried. Some, some, mm -hmm. let, let some sleeping dogs lie. Just leave it where it is. They don't need to know everything. But this is the problem with that. They don't know what they have to battle or deal with. So if you don't tell your spouse, and if you can't be open enough with your spouse to tell them about your past, mm -hmm. then you're not truly delivered from your past. That's right. Your past is still holding you. If you can't talk about what you came out of, what you came from, if you can't give your testimony about it, if you can't tell people you used to be a prostitute, if you can't tell people you used to be a homosexual, if you can't tell people you used to do drugs, mm -hmm. if you can't give your testimony about it, that means you're still ashamed about, ashamed of it. 
And not just say what God brought you from. If you can't share your spouse, what you're struggling with. Exactly. This is your spouse. I'm struggling with pornography. This I'm is struggling your person. with whatever. You, if you can't discuss this open with your spouse, he or she needs to know what to pray for. I'm struggling with lust. Yeah. If you I can't. have a wandering eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you can't, if you cannot open it, admit that thing, if you can, especially to your spouse, mm-hmm. the one person who who should not be judgmental towards you, some of them are. But your spouse should not be judgmental. And some of you just have trust issues. Not with your spouse. You won't even try to tell them. They probably won't judge you or say anything. And this is what you may not understand. When you're married like that, you you feel everything. Mm, you really do that. become one. That, yeah. And some people leave it to just prophets and apostles and prophetic households and ministers and, and people and ministers and people in leadership and ministry. Oh, they, they're the ones that get all the spiritual feelings and stuff. No, you are the prophet in your house. Your husband is the priest in your house. You guys are the leaders in your house. So you feel everything going on in your house. I remember when he was out of town, he was in Washington on a trip and I was here and I had the feeling that I wanted to watch porn. So I know me, that was never my issue. That was never my thing. Never wanted to watch porn. I had other stuff going on. That wasn't it though. Uh-huh. So I called him in Washington. I said, Hey, are you okay? Because I know me. I don't do that. That's not my thing. He's like, oh, no, I'm fine. But we're open enough in our house to be able to discuss that. I, I could call him and ask him that. And he not get upset or feel like I'm attacking him or something's coming off the surface. So I said, well, hey, what's going on? You okay? He said, no, I'm fine here. I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'm good. And I trusted that he would tell me if he wasn't. So then a, a, a day later or whatever, uh, going through, we forgot we have teenage boys now. We forgot at the time we had teenage boys. <laughs> So, you know, I'm in a house. And hey, you see pick, going right. Right. So <laughs> I picked up somebody's uh, a tablet or a phone or t- it wasn't the phone. It was a tablet or something like that. I'm like, oh, well, look at that. That's a butt. And it's not, you know, yeah, okay. So long story short, it ended up being one of the boys. And so we had to sit down and talk to him about this and talk to him about emotions and feelings. But in your house, you will pick up on everything. Mm-hmm. But if you continually focus on the, the yourself and the negative and what I'm not getting, it, how I'm feeling it, oh, you have to snap out of that, come out of it and realize that, that, that it's not always about you. Mm-hmm. What about the other person? We live in such a selfish generation, such a selfish society, lovers of ourselves, boasters, prideful, all of that. It's all about how we look, mm-hmm. what we got, where we drive, where we're going, where we've been. We want to take trips. We want to take selfies on the beach with our friends. We want to take all these road trips. What about the other person, though? What about your spouse? What about your spouse? You know, what, what, maybe you, you're having these feelings and emotions, and you're waking up, and you're on a girl's trip somewhere, and you're like, ooh, girl, maybe because I went out last night. Maybe your spouse at home dealing with something. But you're so selfish that you can't stop and think, what about my spouse? Mm-hmm. And we don't want to complain about what he's not doing and what she's not doing and what they're not doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off this soapbox. But what about your spouse? If they don't feel like they are, 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 are open enough, if your spouse tells you you're on the phone all the time, this is for the ladies. If your spouse feels like you're on the phone all the time, all the time, he may not feel comfortable telling you anything. He won't. Because you're on the phone all the time. He won't. I don't take that lightly when we're in counseling with people and the husband says she's just always on the phone. Get off the phone. He notices it. He may not want to talk to you at that moment. He may just want to sit on the sofa with you. You might not want to watch football. Mm-hmm. But he just wants to sit on the sofa with you, but you're always on the phone. You're not married to your best friend. You are not married to your cousin. Get off the phone. He notices that. So if you're always on the phone like that, he's not. he may not want to intimately tell you, you know, I just woke up and I just had this really crazy dream and this lady in my dream was doing this and this lady in this dream was this way. That's my Facebook scribe, April. You know, so he, 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 men notice every little thing that we do, ladies. They do. And if he, if he wants opens up and says one thing, you have to take that as an honor. You have to hold that to high strength. <laughs> Queens don't give up valuable information. And then you may not be the queen at your church. You may not be the queen at your job. You may not be the queen at your, your, your school. But you are queen. If you are married, you are queen of a household. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you have a responsibility as a queen to protect as well. Mm-hmm. To serve. To be loyal. You have a responsibility as a queen of your household. I do not play about my household. I do not play about my husband and my boys. There are a lot of women who come through. Oh, your boy, your your, your oldest son is so handsome. Mm-hmm. 
He sure is. And you old. You're a cougar. I don't play about my husband and my children because I, I am the queen of my household. And I take it seriously when he tells me something. I take it seriously when my boys tell me something. So going back to what we originally started with, skeletons in, in your closet, those things will come out. Those are things that you have to battle with. Those are things that they have to, those are things that they have to be battled with. Mm -hmm. They do. Those are things that have to be dealt with. Go ahead, jump in. I'm sorry. I just want to go back to what you said about about the, the queen protecting mm -hmm. her home and being being you know mm -hmm. in, protecting her home in a sense of protecting what happens inside of her home. Mm -hmm. I remember this one teaching on the virtuous woman, yeah. and I can't remember who who did the teaching. He, he was talking about always using the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, talk about the virtuous woman and how she does this, she does that. But what the virtuous woman was actually doing when, when he read it, when he, when he taught it, it was just so you know eye opening, is that she protected her home until her husband slept together. Ah, that's right. Okay. She protected her home mm -hmm. until her husband got herself together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you go back and yeah. read the text, the husband it, it talks about what she did and how she took care of the home, how she protected the home, how she mm -hmm. did this while her husband went to the gate and hung out. She protected her home, mm -hmm. and, and 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 women, you have to understand that when your husband confides in you, when he talk when he's talking to you, mm -hmm. it's not for you to go back and share with your girlfriends. It's not for you to go back and 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 just kind of have a casual. Girl, let me tell you what's on, what he told me last night. Tell you, what you think about this? What you think? Mm -hmm. And I get what she think. He told you. Mm -hmm. He told you. Yeah. And, and I, I say this because. It's harder for men to open up and be vulnerable and share those things that that, that you know may, may make them seem weak, may make them appear to be um, insecure. It, it's difficult for men to share those things, but if he can trust his wife to keep his darkest and deepest secrets, and he can see you as a friend. That's right. Your marriage will grow so much more. That's right. That's if right. he can trust his wife. To keep his secrets mm -hmm. and, and begin to see her as his best friend, your marriage will skyrocket. Amen. I'm telling Amen. you, it will. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it will because he would rather come home and talk to you about stuff than go and hang out with his homeboys and talk to his homeboys about stuff. Because they don't know. Because <laughs> they, they, they not. They probably. I mean, they may offer good sound advice, but why not talk to the person that can pray for him in those areas? Mm -hmm. The person that's gonna deal with what he's dealing with. Mm -hmm. If if he is if he is struggling with if struggling with pornography. Babe, I'm having this whole time pornography. I, I got these feelings that I want to just watch it every now and then. Mm -hmm. And it could be because he he did it before he got married. Mm -hmm. You know, and if that's the case, then he, mm -hmm. he need to talk about it to his wife because she might be feeling feelings and wonder why she feel her, what she want to touch herself mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And she may un I understand why it's coming this way. And she ain't talking about it. You ain't talking about it. Mm -hmm. So both of y'all struggling with something and both of y'all doing things and my mm -hmm. is back. But ain't nobody talking about it because mm -hmm. we don't want to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something to, into the marriage. Uh -huh. Talk about those things. That's good. And what about what about confidence? Like like pornography is a a natural thing. But what about internal stuff that they like, deal with? Yeah. Confidence. Confidence. He may be struggling with confidence in some areas. You know, or a great example, if he's out of work. Right. If he's out of work and having a hard time finding work, and, and you're working every day, you you know you're holding the house the household down while he's trying to find work. Mm -hmm. he, he, may, he may feel you know some some areas of, of incompetence or right. insignificance in the household because right. he's not working. He's not able to carry the load. He's not able to be the provider that he wants to be that he desires to be. And don't think for one minute most men who cannot provide they the, internally that 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 concerns them. It weighs them heavy. It would, it would cause um, oppression to come try to set in and depression to come try to set in because internally he wants to provide. He wants to, to go right. out of the That's household right. and work and, and be the breadwinner for the home. But he just may be down, you know, down right. right now. He may not be able to find the job that he wants or may get laid out for work. You don't, and those, you have to talk about those things. So women, don't, don't, don't try to open his face, get out there and find a job. That man might be trying to find, it just ain't happening for him. Mm -hmm. So you want to be that safe. You don't want to beat your husband up with words. Mm -hmm. Don't beat him up with words. Build him up with words. Mm -hmm. And same thing for the women. Same, same thing, thing for, for the women. women. You don't want to beat your don't spouse. Beat you. Don't you don't beat want to beat her up. down because she can't get that extra 30 pounds off. Yeah. She's trying. She done had three kids. And you wonder why she why she mm -hmm. 30 pounds heavy. Her womb is tired. You did it too. Her womb is tired. She pushing out babies. You know, so so you want to speak like, edify your spouse. Mm -hmm. Edify your spouse. So mm -hmm. I take every opportunity to edify your spouse. Even when things are going great at home, 
Continue to encourage each other. When things are going bad at home, you just frustrated in the household. Right. Continue to encourage each other. Right. Speak life right. to each other. Build each other up with That's words. Right. That's right. You don't know what he or she is experiencing on the job. You may not understand completely what he or she is experiencing internally based on what's happening in, in the household, what's mm -hmm. happening on the job, what's happening at church, yeah. what's happening with the kids. You know, we deal with things internally a lot of times and mentally, good morning, um, um, that we don't really discuss openly, and we have to be able to just speak life sometimes. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't understand mm -hmm. what's going on, what's happening, why it's happening, what's happening, speak life, encourage each other, edify, build up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing because you, if this, when you said that, I, I, I remember the instant, you know, we always talk about ourselves. <laughs> Go ahead and share the video if you haven't shared the video. And I thank you for my Facebook scribe, April, yes. who's scribing and re So if you're listening and you're watching yes. us, Go ahead and post what we're saying so mm -hmm. this can kind of catch on. And uh, I remember when, when he was going through one of those the rough spell and, and he in transition. And we were in transition in our life, transition in every area. And I remember I was I was upstairs doing something. And the Lord said, you need to go downstairs and check on your house. And I'm thinking, is somebody trying to break in the house? You know, what's going on? You know? And um, I go downstairs and he's sitting on the sofa. And he's sitting on the sofa looking like a zombie. And I was like, whoa, what's this? And at this moment, I was tired and drained as well. But this is why I always talk about self-will, not self-will, but selfishness and coming out of yourself. Um, because a part of being a team is you have to check on your other teammates. You can't, who are you going to throw a ball to if you're the quarterback and you don't have teammates? Who, who are you going to throw the ball to? You're just the quarterback of what? Self? Mm -hmm. If you're the running back and you don't have anybody to throw the ball to you to catch it, you're just going to run with the ball? You're just going to run with the ball everywhere. <laughs> So I remember I came in and, 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 and he was just having one of those moments. He was just having one of those moments. And what did I have to do? This is the moment when I had to step up. I had to get that spiritual music on, get that, that word playing throughout the house, get that stuff going, make sure I prayed over, make sure this, 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 and this. And he bounced right back. Those are the kind of things that you have to look out for. Those are, this, is, this is a part of making your marriage a winning team. You have to look out for the other person. And I still didn't finish because I feel like it's pressing on me. I still didn't finish when it comes to the, the, the skeletons and the secrets and the things like that. Sometimes the thing that you may be dealing with may be something old and you know you need to get it out. Especially if you're married to a prayer warrior. They, gonna, mm -hmm. they, they know something. But sometimes there, there, there's some stuff that you need to get out and some stuff that you need to say. Ladies, if you were molested when you were younger... And you think that you're going to just suppress it and not, not talk about it, not um, deal with it. It affects your marriage. It affects your, your marriage sexually. It affects your marriage intimately. It affects how you, how you deal with your husband, how you see your spouse. Uh, 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 it affects how you all interact with each other intimately as well in your bedroom. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. I've had to counsel uh, uh, many of women who would, 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 would have, may have been molested at a younger age and then they may uh, be intimate with their spouse and they can see the molester. That's the enemy. Those are open doors. There are some things that you have to talk about and there may be a moment where you say, you know what, I want to talk to you and you know, listen, I've never told anybody but I was molested when I was young. And your spouse may go, oh, well, aha moment, that's what this is. Why is she though so this way? So it's some stuff that ha it's there are some things that have to come out. They have to come out of the closet. Because when you realize that spirits are generational. Mm -hmm. Spirits are generational. They are. And if you don't deal with them, now if you, I'm talking to you, if you don't deal with the generational spirits, they're going to trickle down to your children. children. Because they are generational. There are spirits assigned to certain families. It's a sign to you. And I don't care what you say. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, okay. You might not, but your baby, look at your baby. Your baby act just like your, your daddy. You might not act like your daddy, but your baby act just like your daddy. Spirits are generational. They are assigned to certain families. And if you don't say, I'm dealing with this right now, me, I'm going to deal with this so that my children don't have to battle, so that my spouse doesn't have to deal with some stuff that he don't know what's in my family background. So you have to deal with that stuff, and that's part of being naked, and that's a part of being unashamed. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I started. Mm, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's you got to deal with it. You got to deal with this stuff. That's that's how you and, come open. And one thing about generational, generational, um, generational spirit. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. say curse, but generational spirits, because um, is you have to really 
identify with what's in your family. Mm -hmm. look, look at your family line. Look over your, the course of your family. It may be different manifestations of the same spirit. If mm -hmm. you if you had a family and all everybody in your family has gone through divorce, or a lot of folks in your family has gone through divorce, yeah. and you gotta wonder why why am I marriage going through so much here right now? Because mm -hmm. the spirit of divorce is generation in your family. Yeah, mama divorced. Aunties and uncles all divorced. Mm -hmm. If I don't remarry somebody else, mm -hmm. look at that. Those, those, those are those are your obvious signs of what you need to pray for in your marriage. Right. If you been molested, sexually abused, um, in your family, you got to you know keep your children close to you. Mm -hmm. It is it's not a matter of walking in fear. I'm That's not right. trying to I'm not trying to bring up bring up fear. It's not fear, mm -hmm. but it's it's wisdom. You know to pray for it. Because mm -hmm. you watch and look for it. Yeah, you know, watch and pray for it. Because mm -hmm. if you if you if you know what to look for, you know to pray for. You know what spirits to call out. Mm -hmm. You know what spirits to, to cause to move. Mm -hmm. You know what spirits to talk to. And you mm -hmm. have to and you have to be bold about that. You got to be able to identify what's going, what's coming down my family line. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know, and we talk about curses, but that generation of blessings. That's right. If, if you come from a household and everybody in your family is married. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everybody in your family is married, and they have mm -hmm. good longevity That's right, stable. in their marriage. And they're right And they're now. stable. You come from a, a prominent, successful family. Then you're not going to let the enemy come in and destroy your household. That's right. Even when you, you're supposed to have challenges, you're not going to let the enemy come in. and Because, hey, my, I know my family is known for being married a long time. Let me tell you something, you guys. All the bells. I'm talking about, I don't think I'd admit a bell, maybe one or two. But all of the bells been married 30-some years, 30-plus years. Having plenty of oh, children. Sure remarried. <laughs> all the kids, all the kids, the same age. They cousin, they brother cousin, sister cousins, brother cousins, because they all the same. They watching me. Hey, hey, brother cousins, sister cousins. But uh, <laughs> but it's but it's like you know you have to really mm -hmm. latch on to the generation of blessings that are coming down in your family as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So you know just just be be on the watch for that. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. talking about naked and unashamed though. Naked and unashamed, and allowing your that's part of it though. Allowing your spouse to really be able to be. Um, unashamed. I mean, you know, um, um, naked with you. Create a safe place for your spouse to mm -hmm. share the intimate secrets. Mm -hmm. As Remember. I said before, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, okay. As I said before, women, we are incubators. I love him. He's really my best friend. Women, we are incubators. So we are built to hold. That's who we are. We are built to hold. We are built mm -hmm. to hold them up. Um, and so hold in whatever they give us. Mm -hmm. So if they give us something important, we are built, built to nurture it. His vision. If he gives you his vision for what he wants to do, and it's, Thanks, it's something. Eric. Thank you, Eric. And, and it's something that you know is extremely wild and radical. And in your mind, you're thinking there is no way that this is gonna work. You hold it and you pray over it. That wild and radical thing that your husband gives you. That's who we are. It's not for us to say, to tear them down and say, no, you know, that's not possible. And then a year later, somebody else does it. Mm -hmm. It's for Support us to hold. Support your spouse's ideas and their dreams. Mm -hmm. they, when they, they share with you, you know, what their visions is, what they what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care how, like you said, I don't care how ridiculous it sounds to you. You know, you may, you may be balling on the inside. Yeah. You oh keep a straight face if they're serious. Like, okay. Keep a straight face. And I'm, okay, baby. Okay, you want to do that? All right. Well, let's pray about it. I put it on prayer list. And you want to yeah. be the first person to, you know, right. go to the sun? I believe we can do that, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just put on our prayer list. We're gonna pray for that thing. Make sure you give us an extra layer of, uh, of suits to get to the right. sun. We're gonna do that. That's me. I'm the master encourager. I'm telling you. If he told me right now that he wanted to climb yeah. on the top, <laughs> that's the rest. What we thinking it. about? What is he thinking about? Yeah, that's crazy. Look, I'm, I'm not even that person on the inside. Let me tell you. If he told me right now. We're going to stop recording, and we're about to get some ladders, and we're about to climb up this building, and we're about to get up there, and we're about to sit on top of there and scream. i am like, yes, baby. I'm like the master encourager. I'm good at that. I, if he so, tells me something, he has to be careful. Because so, I have to be careful with my wife. Right, we got to go and pray, because all the, we're out of school here. <laughs> oh, we're well, sorry. We're we out of school in Birmingham. School School's been shut down in Birmingham area, um, so we are going to finish recording and get back in the bed. But some of you may have to go to work today, <laughs> but that's not our testimony. Hallelujah. Bless God. That is not our testimony I, this morning. I just really cannot with him. <laughs> that is not our testimony this morning. So we want we want to keep you and make you ready for work. That's right. That's right. So go ahead and pray, baby, so these blessed people can get to work on time this morning. <laughs> oh, we forgot you guys are at work. That um, you have real jobs today. And I want to tell you, hey, I want to tell y'all children good morning. Good morning, children.
Oh, good morning. For y'all who are playing in the household, your children are listening to us. Good morning, babies. Y'all have a great day at school today now. Hopefully they're still asleep. They Baby, it's almost 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They got school today. Oh, that's right. They do. They, got they school. do. Oh, they do have school. Hi. All right. So, uh, we're going to go. <laughs> yes. We're, oh, the shade. Yeah. <laughs> and go ahead and share. If you haven't already shared the video, go ahead and share it on your page. If you're watching the replay, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a special place in heaven for those who are watching the replay right now. Okay, so if you're watching the replay, here's your hashtag replay and an emoji with the hand up. Let me see the emoji with the hand up. That's good. Alright, All right, so this morning we're praying about being um 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 naked, um, naked and unashamed. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you, God, that amidst the, all the storms and everything that are raging out in the seas and the oceans, God, that you're still keeping us, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are keeping us. You are covering us. You are protecting us, God, because that's who you are, Lord yes, God. Lord. That is who you are in our lives. You are our protector and you are our provider and you are our comforter, God. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, we Lord. don't take it lightly, God, especially those who live in Mobile on the Gulf Coast, Lord. We don't take it lightly, Lord God, that you continue to cover us when life is raging, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We love you, and we and we really honor you, and we thank you for that, Father God. And Lord God, before we go any further, Lord, Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us if we've said anything, if we've done anything, whether we knew or didn't know, seen, unseen, omission, commission, God. But forgive us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Forgive us, God, because we always want to come, be able to come before you with clean hands and a pure yeah. heart father god so we thank you lord we love you on this day we honor you on this day father god and we thank you today for marriages god yes, lord. we thank you for marriages god we thank you god that you are a raising up a, a, a raising up marriages raising up and putting a standard before the people of how marriage yes, should lord. be godly marriage should be yes, God Lord. that you are showing people that that that, that there is unity in marriages, God. Yes, that there is trust in marriages, God. That there is fun in marriages, yes, God. Lord. The beauty of marriage, the joy of marriage. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. That with you, all things are possible, yes, God. Lord. So we think that some things are impossible, but we thank you, God. That to, in order to build up. That you can build up, that you can raise up, that you can restore, that you can resurrect some things, yes, God. So Lord. we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that any walls that we have, that any walls that we have, that we have up as spouses, God, with our spouses, God, that they're torn down now, even in the singleness, God, that there are some walls that may be built up that need to be torn down before they enter into marriage, yes, Father Lord. God, that those walls are, 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 are coming down now in the name of Jesus the so that they Jesus. are able to be intimate and to be uh, 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 unafraid, unashamed, to be uh naked with their spouses father god yes, lord. that they can they can they can share things with their spouses their spouses can share things with them god and when they do they have that wisdom and they have the fruit of the spirit of self-control god that they won't talk and they won't say it that they'll hold it and they'll pray over it in the name of jesus yes, father lord. we thank you for that trust god that trust that's in that marriage that trust to trust to be able to trust their spouse in some marriages god trust has been torn down father god but we thank you lord god that you're building back up the gate of trust yes lord in the marriage, God, that you're yes, putting Lord. that trust back up in the yeah, marriage, the God, and so that, that when that gate of trust is open, it's a two-way thing. When that gate of trust is open, Father God, they can come in, he can share with her, and she can share with him in the name of Jesus. And for the single people, that they can be open to share with you, to know that you know all things in the name of Jesus already. Yes, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are building up, that you are restoring these marriages. You're putting restoration in these marriages in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that the husbands are walking in their purpose, that they are the priests of their home, that they're yes, walking Lord. in confidence, God. They're walking in purpose. They're walking in who they are, Father God. If they're in ministry, God, that you are protecting them and you're clothing them, that you're giving them the helmet of salvation and you're yes, giving them Lord. the blessed prayer of righteousness, God, yes, that you are girding truth around their waist and you are putting the gospel on their feet, God, the yes. Gospel of peace on their feet, God. And they carry the sword of the Spirit, which is your word, God. We thank you, Father God, that they are clothed in your garments, God. We thank you, Lord, that they are built up and ready to move for what you have them to move in, Father God. We thank you, God, that the spouses, the wives, God, that the wives know that they have to be uh, uh, confidants, God, that they're great nurturers, God, that they know how to pray, that they're interceding. God, let the wives know that they are natural intercessors. You are a natural intercessor in your home. We thank you, God, that they know that they are natural intercessors in their homes, Father God. It doesn't matter whether they're walking in, in their ministry or school or 
church or wherever, in their homes, they are the natural intercessors, God, and that they hold the things that their spouses tell them, Father God, so that their spouses can be naked, Father. We thank you, Lord, thank that you, there Lord. is no shame. We bind the spirit of shame right now in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. We bind the spirit of shame. We tell you, you cannot operate anymore. You must yes, cease Lord. and desist in, in any Jesus. person's life that's listening to me right now in the in name, the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. The spirit of shame, you must, you cannot operate anymore. You will no longer <laughs> cause them to be uh, 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 in bondage to what needs to come out so they can be set yes, free Lord. in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are, you have been told you can no longer operate. In your assignment is canceled Jesus. in the Thank name of Lord. Jesus. We lose you, Holy Spirit, to go in with all Thank of your Lord. freedom and all of your truth in the word of God, Lord. We thank you, God, that the truth shall set you free. Yes, and we Lord. thank you, Lord. The thank truth Lord. is coming into where that spirit of shame is trying to back it down. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Ghost, thank that it is Lord. done. That that spirit of shame is torn down so that each person can get out what they need to get out in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that those mocking spirits that may try to, we, we bind those mocking spirits that may try to mock, thank you, Lord. that may try to cause a rift, that may try to mock Jesus, the person who's right trying to uh, uh, get it out and talk about it and discuss it. We bind those right mocking now. spirits. That's what causes the laughter and the joking. We bind those mocking spirits in the name of Jesus. We tell you your assignment is over. You can no longer operate and you must go. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Name of you Jesus. must go to a dry place in the name of Jesus. We loose you, Holy Spirit, to come into that area also with yes, your truth. Lord, in the name of we Jesus. thank you, Lord, with your joy, the true joy, not the, the fake mocking joy in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that these marriages and these areas, that these husbands are going to begin to confide in their spouses and their wives. And these wives are going to begin to confide in their husbands, God. And we thank you, God. We sever any soul ties. Those soul ties that need to be uh, severed, where spouses are talking to other people, outside people, uh, yes, uh, 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 parents, sisters. Sisters, brothers, cousins, best friends, we those souls has to sever in the name of Jesus so that those spouses can begin to talk to their spouses, not yes, outside sources. We thank you, God. That's what happening in that's what's happening in these marriages is that you are building up their marriages, their homes, their teams in the name of Jesus, their kingdoms in their homes in the name of Jesus, yes, their little Lord. kings in their homes, queens in their homes. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We don't take it lightly, Father God. How much you love us. How much you do for us on a daily basis, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are our protector and our provider. And you know what we need before we need it. You know what we need when we need it, Father yes, God. And we Lord. thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because we know that you love us. You honor us, too. We honor you so much, God, but you honor us and you love us in the name of Jesus. Yes, and we thank you, God, that you are concerned thank about you. our marriages. You are concerned about uh, uh, those in their single state, God. You are concerned about every area of our life in the name of Jesus. And we yes, thank Lord. you, God. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are our shepherd, God. Yes, God. You lead us beside still waters, in God. In the name of Jesus. You are our shepherd. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us in our homes in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you anoint our hands with oil. And our cups run over, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, God, you protect us, God. Your rod and your staff, they do. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That where some of these marriages could have been, it could have failed, could have been torn down, God. Yes, you Lord. allow a little bit of remnant right there, God. You allowed it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you allowed. You allowed it so that restoration, so you could get the glory out of the yes, restoration. Yes, you could get the glory out of it. We thank you, God, that for those who are separated, God, that you're going to begin to bring them back together in the name of Jesus. Yes, and you're going to begin to tie them back together, God. Restoration right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that where there is separation, God, restoration that you're going to begin to do that in the name of Jesus. And that their marriage will begin to be a, a glorious testimony for you, Lord, about the struggles that come, the struggles of life, God. The cares of this world that come in sometimes. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, God. Lord, continue to protect those down in Florida. Continue to comfort and give peace to those in Texas. Continue to comfort those in Mexico. We forget about Mexico, but God, continue to comfort those in Mexico, Lord. Yes, Lord. All of the islands, the Caribbean, Caribbean. the Texas, the the, the, the 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 Turks and Caicos, God, down in Jamaica, down in Cuba, God, give those people peace and comfort. Yes, and those Lord. who don't know you, God, let them come to know you as your Lord and say, as their Lord and Savior, God. Continue to cover them, Lord. Forgive us, God. Forgive all of us. Forgive yes, us, God. Lord. Our world is bleeding right now. We know it. Forgive us, Lord. Your word says that them, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, Lord, and turn from their wicked ways. So, God, forgive us. 
Because we're calling out to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We are calling out to you, Lord God, for every area of our life, not just marriages. We're asking you to forgive us. Yes, and we're Lord. telling you we repent of all our ways, God, all yes, our Lord. ways that are not like you, God. In the name forgive of us, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Forgive us, God. So we love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we honor you, Lord God. And we praise your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are such a holy, wonderful God. And we love you. We know that all of your promises are yes and amen. We know yes, that you've Lord. given us all this authority over creepy crawling things and all of every fish in the sea and all the birds in the air. And you've given us all this authority that we can speak to winds and we can speak to waves. But God, we don't want to ever forget you yes, and Lord. how much we love you. It is always about you. So, Lord, we don't want to be prideful. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to be prideful. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to be prideful, God. So we love you, Lord. We don't want to be prideful. In the name we love Jesus. you, God. And we praise you and we honor you. So as we go forward in this day, God, we remember to lift you up today. To lift you up today, God. To love on you at some point throughout this day, all day. Just loving on you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. And we know that it is in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. Lord. It is in Jesus' name that all of this is done. It is in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us this morning. If you have not shared a video, go ahead and share it on your page. Uh, we thank you right now for just joining us. We'll be here every morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thing. All right, we thank you. <laughs> Have a great day today. Yes, yes, Remember, yes. each and every day to empower and impact lives. And let's change this world. Yes, Lord. One yes, person Lord. at a time. God yes. bless you. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. Thank you, you, Destiny. Thank you, Destiny. Yes. Look, you get mad in two weeks. weeks. Two oh, weeks. you're mad. Congratulations, Destiny. Destiny's getting married in two weeks. Yes, that's right. Destiny. Yes, congratulations. Go ahead, Destiny. Destiny. That's Thank all, you, that is all right. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Wishing your husband and your future husband the absolute Thank best in your life together. Um, you make sure y'all watch these videos together. We've been mm -hmm. posting them every day, except yesterday. We apologize for yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yesterday. Yeah, we apologize for yesterday. We was immobile and had a lot going on. All right, God bless you all. Have a great day. Remember, each and every day to empower and affect lives, and let's change this world one person at a time. God bless you.